Okay, guys. So I just had this motor running here, but I just want to talk about it a little bit. How to. Okay, so I've got that BMS turned off. That's why that's that meter isn't registering. This one's still on. I just took the power cable off of it until I start it up again. But like the power goes in to these four coils from this battery and it charges that one. That power goes into these four and charges that one. But you'll notice when it's running it'll charge more as it starts up because more power is going into the motor for startup. It'll level out at somewhere around 50 watts total between two battery banks. And what you'll also notice too usually is this one sometimes will pull twice as much as that one does. And the reason for that, and it, but it'll charge at the same rate, but what's happening is it's it is actually burning the power off in these in the transistors because I'm only using one trigger coil and the back spike is what is causing these transistors to turn on too hard so they're actually burning the power right here wasting it If I had two trigger coils, they would run equally. But it's also just more stuff to put on the rotor, right? And if I put two trigger coils, I could also use the scope on two channels. I can't use the scope on two channels right now because it puts a direct short. Like the same reason why you can't hook up a scope to the mains power that's coming. Like if you're trying to read the say the grid power while you're plugged into the grid you'll fry your scope but it'll do the same with this motor if I try to hook it up because the trigger coil powers both sides of the motor if I had two separate trigger coils it could do a lot more with this motor just want to say that and uh, you'll see back in my old videos it doesn't really matter how much power you're putting in well it matters for the amount of power you get out right but it'll always be proportional to the amount of power you're putting in so if i'm putting in 50 watts i'll usually get about 10 back charging right but the trick to getting a lot of power out of these type of motors is to put each coil with a very low impedance each one right they're all the same impedance so these two here and these two there are in, are in series I mean so what happens though when you want like a lot of people they figure to make the motor run more efficiently they should have a big coil with a lot of impedance it works if you just want to cut down the, the amount of power going in that's a way to do it right so but the only way to get the torque is to make very low impedance coils but put them in series with each other so each coil has its own magnet to work off of but you're still cutting the impedance down going into the motor it'll cut your output power down but it'll make your rotor power it'll quadruple it with with your and your input power will go down that's why you see that's why i did this build in a like a series so that you could actually see the production of how it lowered the input power but made the rotor so much stronger that's the goal with these motors it's not to charge batteries it's not what this is for it's charging batteries because it has to charge batteries. If you don't charge batteries, you'll fry your transistors. And if you don't get rid of that energy, 
they just burn up and get really, really hot. But yeah, that's how you make a motor with a lot of power for less input. If I was to put two more coils in series with the ones that are on each one already, you'd see the input power go down, the output power would go down, but the rotor torque would go way up. I'll give her a quick run since I'm making a video. And the way to, the, in the previous videos, I had this trigger coil moved over probably about this much, this way. So I've actually got it to where it should be, but it's harder to start because it's more in the position for it to want to make speed and uh, power with less input power. So I'll leave it start up. And I should just have to go on here to uh, start up the other one. before it's hitting 770 hertz the bottom is the discharge into the output and the top is the input that's going into these two coils and these two coils is charging that battery so you'll see it's using about 50 watts total going in Usually levels out around 35 watts on this one and about 15 watts on this one. And it'll charge at just over 10 watts total. So on 5.36, that one's at 5.3. So if you look back in some of my other videos, you'll see that the power coming out is pretty much the same no matter how many coils are on the motor. So it pretty much equals what's going in comes out at a percentage. Oh, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.